Hi guys and welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a fabulous start to this new year 2020. I hope you are well underway to achieving your goals and making your life better. Um, I wish I could say the same. Uh, pretty good start but I've uh, fallen off the cart a few times but um, back on. Anyway the purpose of this video is really just a reflection video to discuss the Rusty Egan interviews that I've just done. Now, um, before I start, I want to thank a personal thank you to Mark Wibro and uh, to Andy McNabb. Uh, Mark is um, a subscriber on my channel and he's been on the channel for a long time. Mark, thank you very much for organizing that and setting it up. So it was Mark who's friends with Andy and Andy knows um, Rusty really well. And to cut a long story short, Mark contacted me once um, because we've been in touch He's been a really loyal uh, supporter and he's become a good friend. And Mark said to me, Vaughan, um, I can get you an interview with Rusty Egan. And I went, who? <laughs> and anyway, so I Googled up Rusty Egan. And as soon as I Googled, the, Googled him up, um, um, as soon as I saw his face, just as I said on the interview, Rusty Egan is one of these people that, you know, you don't know who he is. As he says, I'm the invisible man. Oh, that's my Rusty Egan impersonation, but uh, probably need to work on it a bit. But as he said, he's the invisible man and he's, he's a really a behind the scenes kind of guy. And the deeper you dig into Rusty Egan and, and he's, he's passed, you will realize that, man, he's, he's, he's been involved in everything. Um, and he, some might say single-handedly, influenced the sound of the 80s. Now, of course, when you influence the sound of the 80s, that means you've influenced the sound of music now. Obviously, producers these days are influenced by the music they've heard, and you know we're, we're all influenced. And as Rusty Egan's history will show, he was the man in the Blitz Club that played these records. Um, he was playing records that he wanted to play, and, and the kind of music that people weren't familiar with. You know, this was long before the internet, and as a result, people would come to the Blitz Club. And it was interesting with the Blitz Club because you had Steve Strange in the door who was very status conscious and he'd be like, no, 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 you can't come in, you're not cool enough. And it was very difficult to get in. Um, and there's a very famous story how Mick Jagger was once <laughs> refused entry into the Blitz Club and that was brilliant. I think Mick Jagger said something like, um, yeah, I do you know who I am? And Steve Strange said something like, you're too drunk or something. I don't know the story. But... Obviously, that Blitz Club and and that whole period, long before the internet, Rusty Egan was playing the records that he liked, and he introduced people that would come to the Blitz Club, from what I understand, to this new sound. And a lot, a lot of these people in the club were artists, and they would be inspired by the records that Rusty was playing, and they would go and they say, oh, I heard this record that Rusty was playing, and they would thereby go and emulate it. We saw this with, you know, the Human League and... A lot of those electronic acts from Sheffield, how they were trying to emulate the sound from Kraftwerk and, and, and that sort of, germ, you know, the electronic sound did sort of originate from German, Germany, really, from Europe and how they emulated it. Yeah. So Rusty Egan was really instrumental by having the artists in the club, hearing the music and then going away, making music that sounded like the music they heard in Rusty's club and then bringing their records to Rusty and say, Rusty, can you play this? And then Rusty would be, oh, this sounds a lot like the music I've been playing. So Rusty was tremendously, tremendously instrumental in creating the, the new romantic sound. And I, I would go so far as to say that I think Rusty is probably one of the most underrated and overlooked people as far as, you know, pop pop and music culture is concerned. And what's interesting was with these interviews that I've just done with him, <laughs> we had a lot of footage and you know, I managed to edit it down to three parts and each part being 30 minutes long. And I'll be honest with you, when I sat down and I was interviewing him, guys, you know, this channel's new and I haven't been doing this for long. You know, I'm, I don't work for the BBC. I'm not a proper interviewer, but I try my best. And Sitting there interviewing him, I realized very quickly, I'm not going to get a word in here, which was a little bit disappointing because I had a whole list of questions because, you know, there was so much I could ask him on, on, on so many subjects. But then my, and, and then of course, when he started talking and he went on and on and on, 
I was enjoying it. I found it really interesting, but I was in the back of my mind, I was thinking, you know, how, how am I, you know, how is my YouTube channel? How are my subscribers going to take to this? Are they going to think, oh God, he's, he's going on and on and on. But my gut feeling was to, to just let him talk, just carry on because I found it really interesting. And in hindsight and in retrospect and looking at the comments we've had from the series, I think that was the, that, that was the right call to make because had I sort of said, no, 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 no. I need to ask you this. Had I shut him down, I think this was the right thing to do just by just letting Rusty talk and get in flow because Rusty Egan is a really great storyteller. He's very funny and he can, he, he can captivate an audience. And of course, there's not many people who can do that, who can just talk for a long period of time and, you know, uh, retain the interest of an audience. And looking back to YouTube, if you go onto YouTube and you type in Rusty Egan or Google, of course, a lot comes up about Rusty Egan. But if you look at so far as YouTube videos are concerned, there's a lot of, there are videos of him and there are clips from him talking in documentaries and stuff. But it wasn't until I met the man and interviewed him and I thought, this man has got so much knowledge and he speaks so much sense and he, he speaks in a way that he's, <laughs> is entertaining He's not boring. He, you know, he get he can talk for like a half an hour, with without being boring, and it's really, really interesting. And he, he talks with such passion, and he's got more energy than you know someone that's a third of his age. So, I really think where we got it right on this interview series, if I may say so, is by just listening to Rusty talk and not sort of shutting him down with questions and just letting him talk because he is a great storyteller. And I'm going to ask the question to you guys to leave your comments uh, at the end of this video and just answer me um, what did you think of the interview series I know that it's been very very well received I knew it would be well received but I was overwhelmed and blown away by the positive uh, response it got I mean I, you know I wasn't expecting it not to do well but I really think there is a hunger for this type of content and for more Rusty Egan so um, Rusty obviously Rusty and I have been in in, in contact through text and email uh, through Facebook and everything, but he did send me a text the other day and invited me to the, the Grad Show Club in, in Soho. It was very short notice, I couldn't go, but I will take him up on that offer and I think we should do something like, because he DJs there and I, I'd i probably like to do like a behind the scenes Grad Show special with Rusty Egan and something else guys, it's kind of like if we come back to the Brian Griffin uh, interview series I've been running on this channel. I was amazed when I first got the idea to do that because I thought, well, no one's done that. Why has no one ever taken someone as famous and as influential as Brian Griffin and and done a in-depth, you know, s series on Depeche Mode's artwork? Why has no one ever done that? So I thought, well, l let me have a go at it. And, it, you know, it's proven to be really successful. And there's been a lot of interest in that. The same with Rusty Egan. If you look at, if you Google up Rusty Egan on YouTube, you will see a lot of snippets and, and short little clips of him. But no one has actually ever said, Rusty, you're an interesting guy. You've got a lot to say. What you have to say will resonate with so many people. Why has no one never, ever seen the opportunity of sitting down with Rusty and allowing him to talk as we allowed him to talk on this channel, um, you know, by doing that three-part series? Now, as I say, there was a lot more footage that... Uh, well, not a lot more. I think I think there's I probably had about two hours worth of footage, but I had I had to edit it into three parts um, because, as I said, I, I you know some people have moaned my videos are too long, um, but I think you guys know I'm not playing to the gallery. You know, I'm not here to be the world's hey man, the best YouTuber. Hit that subscribe button, like, yeah. <laughs> but coming back to what I said, there is a lot that Rusty Egan can say he's such an interesting guy there's been such interest from you guys and i really want to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of the interview series and i've got no doubt we're going to be seeing rusty egan a lot more on this channel and i'm really i'm really excited about that because there there is so much there's so much to tell there is so much that he told us in this interview series that i've never heard before you've never heard before and i'm happy to be able to you know bring you that on my humble channel so leave your comments below and let me know your thoughts on that interview I did and what you would like me to interview him on moving forward. It, as I said, it was very difficult because I had a lot of questions and I couldn't sort of, it's, you know, like with most interviews, you go one question, 
da 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 like like if I interview Brian, I ask a question, he answers. Question answer. With Rusty, it's not like that. So I understand that. Maybe I can. Maybe we can encourage Rusty to sit down and do some quick quick ones. You know, like um, I'll get you guys to send me some questions. But right, guys. So I have my work cut out for me. I've got a lot to do. As I say, we've got the Geek Talk uh, series. We've got the Rising Star. On Rising Star, I'm going to be interviewing a lot of up and coming artists including Parallax from uh, Australia and Empathy Test from the UK, which will be very interesting. To, so we're going to be, there will be a lot more um, sort of up and coming artists interviewed on this channel. Also, the Depeche Mode album review series will continue. I'm going to be doing a special with my friend Simon Forsyth. We're going to be heading out on the road and we're going to um, go and visit Tom J. Carpenter. Who, Tom's the guy who builds the, um, who owns Analog Solutions and he has access to all the synthesizers that Depeche Mode used, you know, from, from the start all the way up until Black Celebration, Music for the Masses. So it'll be interesting to uh, get a behind the scenes look at those synthesizers. I can get off topic because there's so much to, to do here. Guys, thank you as always. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, um, hit the like button, leave a comment, um, and do join the Facebook group. Uh, links to all that are below. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Peace out.